Um, so, Bobby, I know that it seemed like a few weeks ago when the Seahaw when the defensive talk around the Seahawks defense was at its height of wondering if you guys could be great this season. You took that pretty personally. So now you get a chance this Thursday with a guy that you didn't get any hurries on or maybe one hurry on. How much are you looking forward to a rematch with the Cardinals? Uh, we're looking forward to it. Obviously, uh, they um, you know they beat us last time. Um, we went down there and. Like you said, we I don't think we had a pressure on them if I think it might have been one. Um, so we're looking forward to it. I think it's a great opportunity. I think it's good to have a, you know, normally you don't like quick games like this, but, you know, it's good to get back on the field and kind of, you know, brush these losses off. Maz Vida. Yeah. Hey, Bobby, what makes a good blitzing team? Is it execution, reading? Is it... You know, I mean, what goes into that execution of being a good blitzing team? Uh, I think it's a combination of everything. I think, um, you know, definitely scheme uh, schematically for sure because um, you have to know, um, you have to have intellect to know how they're going to pick your blitzes up and you have to know, you know, where they're going to slide and how they do different protections. Um, and I think at the end of the day, it's, it's definitely hard too because sometimes, um, you know, they block it the right way, but, you know, somebody makes a great play. So I think it's a combination between schematically, um, execution, you know, the guys running the blitzes right, um, making the right reads, and then at the end of the day, just somebody beating somebody. Art Teal. Uh, Bobby, you mentioned the last game uh, with Murray. Um, he had 48 dropbacks, and you guys didn't get a, uh, a sack or a hit. Um, is that, I mean, just – a pure talent thing, or did you, upon film review, see something about what you guys did that game that's correctable? I definitely feel like there's things that we did that game that's, that is correctable. Um, I think we had opportunities um, to do so, and I think we just got to execute. And, you know, I think we, you know, I don't think we had Jamal last game. We didn't have a couple other guys last game. So, um, you know, we'll be, I think we'll be able to get to him. Jen? DeAndre Hopkins, it doesn't matter what you do, he can still come down with it. What do you do when he is being targeted twice as much as any other receiver in that system? Uh, you just got to make sure you tackle him when, get, when he gets the ball. You know, you understand that uh, they're going to throw it to him about 20 times. And so hopefully he doesn't catch all 20 and, and you, you know, it's a catch tackle versus um, him catching the ball and getting yard as a contact. So, you know, I think... You know, you guys saw the play. You understand, you know, what it is. I would throw it to the guy, too, if, if he was going to catch it like that all the time. So, uh, you know, we just have to make sure we limit his plays and, and uh, you know, make sure he doesn't get any yards after contact. Curtis. Yeah, Bobby, over the last two games, you guys had 10 sacks. So uh, given where you were at coming into this last little stretch here, it's a pretty big uptick for you guys. How, how much do you look at that and feel, okay, this is sustainable, this is something we can build upon, and what could that open up for you guys defensively if it is something that's a little bit more real week to week? I definitely feel like it's something that's sustainable. You know, I think um, um, they haven't found an answer for, for Jamal, you know, when he's coming off the edge and things of that nature. Um, you know, we still have guys that can get into a groove, so they're, they're still, um, you know, it's definitely promising having, you know, 10 sacks and just building off that. We just have to put it together, and we have to put it, get, put it together consistently. And I think that's where we're at with it. We have to, everything that we do it has to be consistent. You know, it can't be do it one, one time and not do it the next. It has to be consistent. So, um, you know, I'm confident in our guys, and, and we'll get it. Bob? Yeah, Bobby, did you notice anything really different in, in how um, how Kyler Murray is playing this year as opposed to last year? I mean, almost nobody's sacking him this year. Last year he got sacked left and right. Their sack numbers are way down this year. Is there something you sense he's doing or a way they're they're using him to kind of prevent those? Um, honestly, I think it's the confidence. I think when he first got into the league and you watched him on, on the film, um, when he was making the runs, he was just kind of running out of bounds. He was just, you know, who can catch him to, to be out of bounds? And then... You know, I think as the season went on, he got a little bit more confidence, and I think you're seeing that um, even more now. You know, they're, they're running the QB running plays. They're having different things, and he's not going out of bounds. Sometimes he's, you know, trying to lower his shoulder to get the first down or take some of his. You just see the confidence that he have in his ability to make the right decision with the ball in his hands, and, you know, I think that's, that's pretty much what it is. I think he's growing more confident in his running ability and, you know, his ability to try to make people miss. And, and I think that's the, the main difference. It's more his mentality than anything else. Jackie? 
Hey, Bobby, um, you kind of touched on that there, but what makes this run attack so dangerous when you have such a mobile quarterback like Murray coupled with Drake, who is a top tier back as well? I think it just makes you have to be, you know, play the plays consciously. You know what I mean? You have, uh, you know, like you say, you have a, a strong running back game, but you have a, a quarterback that complements the running back game, you know, just as good. So, you know, you'll have pullers going to your left and thinking the ball's going that way, but then, uh, you know, Kyler will keep it and run to the right, and you know, not many people can catch him when he's at top speed. So, uh, you you just have to be on your game, and everybody has to do their job, and um, you know, keep eyes on him for sure. And then, secondly, as one of the leaders in the locker room, what has kind of been your messaging to this team as you following the back-to-back -back losses? That um, you know, we have to. Uh, learn how not to make the same mistakes twice, and we have to be consistent. I think that's the biggest thing. You know, a lot of great defense, they learn from their mistakes and they, they don't um, continue them. And so I think it's just being positive as well, understanding that we have to, you know, be positive in this, in this situation. We understand that we're not playing the way we want to play, but we can, and we have the players to play the way that we want to play. And so I believe in, in the guys in the locker room. I believe in, in everybody, and that's the, been the main message. And, you know, you have to keep having that belief. You know, we're sitting at six and three. Um, it's not like it's three and six. And so, um, you know, we really need to uh, be consistent and do our jobs. Thank you. Michael, Sean. Hey, Bobby, how has the adjustment been, like, the, the defenses you guys are mixing up versus, like, you know, like the LOB days, a lot of cover three. You guys are trying a lot of different things. Now, how's that adjustment been for you in the last, like, maybe year or so? Um, you know, it's been an adjustment. I mean, obviously, when we were, um, you know, playing with guys like Cam and Sherm and, you know, people forget we had so much time together to create that uh, camaraderie that we had. And so, um, you know, these past few years, we've been kind of like in and out, you know, from various positions. And so, um, you know, the connectiveness has had to be sped up. And so I think that's been a, a big difference. But I, I feel like we've, um, you know, been growing in the right direction. So I'm, I'm positive with that. Thanks. Brady. Hey, Bobby, uh, we haven't seen you guys blitz as much, I believe, under Pete Carroll as you are now. What is that? How different has that felt? And also, what is the challenge when you're doing that against a quarterback like Kyler Murray? Um, I think when, you, when you're doing that against like Kyler Murray, you have to maintain your rush lanes because anytime he sees somebody out of their lane or somebody out of their gap, um, he takes off. And so that's something that we have to be conscious of and we have to be ready for. And, and as far as just blitzing more, um, you know, I think it's always nice to, to blitz more. You know, you just go and attack the quarterback. I think it's fun. Um, you know, the challenges with it is just making sure you have to execute because quarterbacks see the blitzes and they want to make sure they, they get the ball out quick. And so, you know, you have to get home before the quarterback, you know, sees the blitz. There's an open area in each blitz. And uh, most quarterbacks can find it, so you want to get home as fast as you can so they can't. Thanks. Ben? Bobby, Russ has, you know, obviously been in a funk for the last, you know, four games. Just, you know, just from knowing him so well over the last several years, um, what about him, like his mentality, I guess, maybe makes him uniquely able to kind of overcome the sort of adversity he's going through right now? Um, I think the number one thing is his belief, belief in himself, belief in his teammates, uh, the confidence in himself, uh, confidence in his teammates, and understanding that, you know, I think he's been saying it all week, it's it's not going to last. You know, there's, there's times where you have stretches where, you know, you're not playing as well as you want to or you're not making the plays that you were making, but but his confidence is unshakable. You know, it's, it's, nobody can shake his confidence, and that's something that you um, admire and appreciate, you know, as a teammate, you know, because everybody – handles adversity differently, and um, he always handles it head on. And so you respect it, you appreciate it, and, um, you know, it's inspiring for sure. Thank you. And last one for Bobby, Steve Weish. Hey, Bobby, how is it going? When you, when you see Arizona, I mean, they're running more read option than, than kind of RPO type stuff, which is helping their run game. How is it reestablishing your keys from going to assignment and chicken ball instead of maybe – doing other reads like you, you would against someone like the Rams just doesn't have a mobile quarterback. Yeah, whenever you have a team that, that likes uh, read option, it's very important for you to do your job. And you can't, um, you know, you can't pop out of gaps. You can't do anything that, that you wouldn't do on a normal play because if they, they find that hole, it's, it's not a two to three yard gain. It's a potential 10 yard touchdown gain. And so 
you know, you have to read your keys, one, you have to be um, really locked in on, you know, your assignment and your job and take care of your job. Because, like I said earlier, you can have a play where there's two pullers and everybody's supposed to run to the left, but your job is to stay backside. And if you go to the left, uh, you know, Kyler to keep it and, and take off for a first down or whatever. So it's really going to test your discipline, really test your, your eyes and your trust in your teammates. And, um, you know, I think we're, we're excited for this opportunity. Thank you, Bobby. Appreciate it.